Yo, Elliot, thank you for your words of encouragement. Recently, I started to take bioenergetic sessions uh, in a group and also in private. My goals are autonomy, to work on pain I have because I'm because of losing my father at a young age and being brought up by other people. And number three, achieve some sort of initiation into manhood. I want to use this to help young men like me in the future. Any suggestions on how you go about it? Well, just watch me. This is what I've done for years. And of course, I don't do grounding camps anymore. I might, but uh, bioenergetics and active meditation are wonderful uh, uh, rites of passage in a way, initiations in a way. So I'll keep this one short. Um, continue to do bioenergetics because you have to work the body part, the body. You got to work the body aspect of it. There's no question about it, especially for men. We're embodied creatures. We, you know, when we get too caught up in our heads, we get stuck. We've got to work things out physically, work, right? That's why we've got these strong bodies. Bioenergetics is about physical work, getting uncomfortable. It's really uncomfortable. Active meditation, very uncomfortable. Great stuff for pushing through pain, and uh, initiating yourself through suffering, right? It's, it sucks to do bioenergetic breathing. <sighs> when can I stop? <gasps> keep going, keep going. If you got a good coach, <laughs> he's gonna push you. But, and this is, this is where I was able to, I wanna say, plug in the holes of bioenergetics themselves. Bioenergetics in itself is not enough. And, and Alexander Lowen, understood this but i don't think he did enough and i don't think he did it in the right way bioenergetic analysis is really what alexander lowen coined and taught bioenergetic analysis is uh, is bringing the mind and the body together it's not just the body it's what's going on in the mind as a result of what you're dealing with in the body and he took a very Freudian approach to it, which I don't think is helpful. It wasn't helpful to me because what the Freudian is, is all about diagnosis. Freud wanted to medicalize psychology. That's why they created, uh, what is medical psychology? Psychiatry, right? Psychiatry is trying to medicalize the soul. Right, because we he as a part of the plan that him and his cadre uh, wanted to do was to desacralize society. I think in a way he was a part of the ideological subversion. I know he is a part of the ideological subversion of the West, which means you desacralize everything, and that means the soul needs to become academic instead of spiritual, instead of theological. Right. So psychology is a soft science because you're dealing with the soul. But he wanted to make it hard, and this is why now you know it went from like doing lobotomies to now like chemi chemical lobotomies, right? It's like psychiatry is about dishing out pills so your brain works different. So he screwed it all up. Carl Jung, on the other hand, stayed within the sacred. I don't agree with everything Carl Jung does and says, but he understood that we have to acknowledge the sacred, spiritual, divine aspect of things. Freud was trying to work from the ground up. Jung worked from the spirit down. He called it the numinous, right? So the aspect of Jung's work that comes into play here is, of course, initiation, and the, which is a spiritual thing. He studied, he, he worked with anthropologists like Mercer Eliade to understand what were these weird things that ancestors were doing that provided some sort of spiritual context and meaning for people's lives? And when it comes to men, initiation was ever present, no longer here today because we're just initiated into, you know, drugs, uh, hip hop, rock and roll, pop culture, fornicating bullshit. That's what we're initiated into. Right? It's meaningless. It's garbage. But they had depth. And his, his brand of psychology is actually often called depth psychology. He wanted to go deep. I mean, what is it? What's really underneath all this? Robert Moore, who I referenced earlier today, may he rest in peace, did the greatest work of consolidating Jung's work into the realm of masculine development. 
So if you really want to take this route, you got to couple the work of, of Alexander Lowen with Robert Moore. I've done this. This is why I talk about King Warrior Magician Lover and breathing into your balls, right? Um, I'm a dilettante. I take things from everywhere. I bring it together and I, and, and I use these things like colors in a painting and I just I'm all over the place right it's part of my ADHD right so I'm not in I brought these things together but I have no intention of becoming the expert in it if this is truly the work that you're in take it and run learn bioenergetics experience bioenergetics go deep in bioenergetics couple it with Jungian psychoanalysis Jungian depth psychology and you have a system that is brilliant especially if you could direct it towards men who need it more now than ever. Anybody watching this video, right? Lewis, put this video up because I want, this is a call to action. Anybody who's watching this video and you're a young academic and you really want to do something amazing with your life and you're, and you're vibing with the things I'm talking about right now, take those two, the, the, the great gifts of the future are merging of ideas. Take these two brilliant men and merge their ideas and, 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 and produce something new and great, right? Maybe it's up to you, Sharma, but take these ideas and develop something new and great. I think that's, I, I don't think there's, I, I, I don't think that there's a better dose of medicine for mankind today than to take these two aspects and bring them together. It's the fusion of the body, the body and the mind and spirit. I think it's beautiful. I will have to add to it, though, too, that we have to refrain from dealing with the divine in a cold academic way. Jung knew this, too, as well. Because the embodiment through bioenergetics can only really be grasped if you do it. And it's the same thing with spirit. Too much, again, you know, we take these ideas and we academic, we turn them academic, right? Medicalize them, make them academic. Spirit requires immersion, immersion, right? People ask me all the time, like, Elliot, how could you submit yourself to Catholicism? They wonder, why, how could you? Well, because I'm not satisfied with conceptualizing it. I'm not satisfied with just reading these things. I gotta do it, right? And it's in the doing that I come to know. A lot of people have hangups with all the things I do. People have all kinds of hangs up with what I do. But right now, you know, I'm, I'm deep into Catholicism. They have all kinds of hang-ups, but they know nothing about it. They only know what the history books written by Marxists and Freemasons have told them, which have always been the enemies of the church. So, you know, when, don't come to me, fellas, with all your history of the Catholic Church because you don't know the history of the Catholic Church, Right? And the reason why I can speak this confidently is because I jumped two feet in. I'm not conceptualizing it, especially from the frame of reference that is of the pop culture narrative. Y'all come with this pop culture, even a lot of Protestants, y'all come with this pop culture narrative. That's what it is. It's post-Reformation pop culture enlightenment narrative. Most of that stuff is lies. So... Anyway, that's my little rant on that. You got to dive two feet in. Be like me, right? That's the only thing I'm going to say, lifting myself up. I don't go lightly into things. I dive two feet in. And you see me. You see me do this. And you see me jump two feet in and jump two feet out. That's how I learn. I don't know how to learn any other way, fellas. Most of y'all who think you know, you know stuff is just because you, you're thinking about it. Don't think about it. Do it. Be it. And then you can speak from a place of authority. Done. Did you know that there's a secret psychological and social war on masculinity in the West since at least the 1960s? If you think I'm crazy, you need to watch my new free masterclass. You'll learn the history and origin of this war, as well as how it's affecting your health, your finances, and how females respond to you. If you're a man who's open to a compelling vision of traditional masculinity, financial freedom, success with women, and generous leadership, then you'll definitely want to study this class. It's called Make Men Strong Again, How Millions of Men Are Fighting Back and Winning the War Against Masculinity. Just click the link in this video or visit MakeMenStrongAgain.com and get this brand new masterclass. It's completely free. It will blow your mind and has a ton of value and it's about 40 minutes long. So make sure that you pay attention and take notes. Why am I sharing this? I'm a mentor to millions of men worldwide on YouTube. So I'm familiar with the biggest reasons why men today are failing in so many areas of their life. And the answer will rock your world. 
but it's not totally your fault. Find out what's really going on. Click the link in this video to watch this class and start taking action today.